Micronus Slug. Power links to share his fire-breathing ability. You know the only time a Dinobot shares his fire-breathing ability? When it's directly with your face. Back to Random Review with more of Power of the Primes, the brand new Generations toy line bringing us Dinobots, Terracons, and all manner of stuff we've been begging for and are finally getting in one facet or another. And then uh, Starscream might be a combiner at some point. Oh, I don't know. They get weird. It's going to be a strange toy line for a while, guys. And considering Hasbro's always been adamant about no Dinobots, it doesn't get any weirder than starting off with a bunch of them. And Slug here is no exception. Yep, he is officially going by his new name rather than his G1, which, uh, yeah, unfortunately in the UK, it's a potty word, so it can't be used. Uh, it's unfortunate because slug just, you know, I know a slug is a punch. I know a slug can be a big bullet. This is, uh, no, no, you just think of the bug now, don't you? So, what do we have here? He has a very, very nice look to him here in Triceratops mode. A beautiful shade of silver plastic. This looks pretty spot on to the shimmer of the original G1 Dinobots. At least as far as my memory goes, this is very nice looking. He looks exceptionally good. And deco wise, you can see he keeps it pretty much to the original G1 stylings. He's got a little bit of black here breaking up the silver along the back nicely. Plenty of black and gold inlaid. A little bit of gold up here at the top. And that's where the fun of the toy is. See, this gold paint is on the inside sections of all of these toys. Now, this is something that they really liked doing in Power of the Primes, and they seem to have done it in places they didn't even have to, where the inside is molded in a techie detail and then flat detail on the outside. So. When you paint the inside, it looks like a multiple layer of elements, even though there's only one piece here. It's an extremely clever trick. It matches the G1 Dinobots main aesthetic, and it's exceptionally nice here on Slug. You can see plenty of layer detailing where all the paint is showing through. It looks extremely cool. It also shows a few, p few places of uh, interest. For instance, you'll notice this hip is just a little bit brighter silver than everything else. That's because I'm willing to guess all of this has been painted over just to get that piece in uh, the same translucent gold effect. That's weird. That's a lot of paint just for one piece to be translucent. Hey, whatever it takes to work, I guess. Beyond that, he's exposing a little bit of red plastic, which we'll get more of in the robot mode. That includes the horns here. And then, of course, the Autobot sigil right there on top. He's a pretty cool looking Dinobot. I would open his mouth and actually show you that uh, he could open his mouth, but the hinge is too low to look natural, and it's on one of those soft ratchets that is way too wide to get an actual look of his mouth open in a more natural stance. So we leave it there. Beyond that, what can we do? Well, he's got ball joints here at the front, as well as swivel and elbow. So he has some articulation there at the front. However, here in the back, it's pretty much limited to just the hips going back and forth, making the articulation up front a little bit pointless, but at least it's there if you come up with some way of posing him to look intimidating. Now, form-wise, he looks fine, though I will say his legs do look a little bit thin if we look at them. There's just something off about just how... Uh, just how thin they are. We'll get to more of that in the robot mode. Oh, by the way, Tampograph G1 details. About the only place that it's existing, but hey, it's nice that it's there. Real quick, let's go over what else he can do here. So for starters, we have his version of the handgun, which is in this big clawed thing. So that has places it can go, preferably here on the top, where we have two Prime Master pegs. And then the 5mm port, where that can fit. And that's pretty much just to give you a block for a Prime Master to plug in. It's kind of like having a Minicon gimmick where the peg for the Minicon has to be attached separately. It's a little bit weird. And here it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really look all that good on him. 
That's going to be a recurring theme, I feel. Meanwhile, he also comes with one of his guns, so that has places to go. The hips have a socket, the ankles down here has a socket, and then there's another one here. There's even one underneath his mouth. He's got plenty of places to plug the gun. A lot of holes being drilled into this guy. So, all that said and done, let's start getting him into robot mode, which isn't too difficult, and we'll start by actually showing you the leg mode, which is pretty easy to get to from here, aside from all the folding up of legs. That's pretty much it. Well, that's uh, pretty much what it's going to be. Just imagine a foot on the bottom of that. That's why I believe these legs are so thin, by the way. That way they don't get in the way of all the other, uh, all the other bits clashing into it and whatnot. That was a problem the last time they tried to do combining Dinobots of some sort. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started by making sure this is clipped into place, like so. It's going to come like that, by the way, just in case. So this is going to look really flat. So remember, it's supposed to be uh, offset a little bit, just in case your uh, Triceratops mode ends up looking a little bit weird. All right, so... Beyond that, he's pretty simple. The upper body is pretty much just, you know, there. Beyond that, we're going to uh, start unhinging everything down here. Get all of his tail out of the way so you can completely uh, unfold the legs. Simple as that. Now, toward the back, we've got a few different things going on. When we rotate this, it's going to flip down these sections, which fill out this huge hollow gap. And this is a pet peeve I've had for years, where toys that have his style of transformation just leave these huge gaps that keep the posability from being what it should. Now, this is so nice. That helps tremendously, and I wish a lot of toys who had these big hollow legs would do that, just so the balance of the figure was a little bit more evened out. All right, so that out of the way, we can go ahead and fold up the legs and... Just get him out of the way. Doesn't really matter just how much. Just beyond that, like, we're done. Like, this is an extremely simple transformation, all things considered. It's pretty much lifted just from the G1 toy with only a few minor changes. But that's not always a bad thing. If you're after a retro feel to your Dinobot, you're going to be happy. So, let's see. Looking at Slug in his full robot mode, he's a little bit more scrawny than I imagined him being. I mean, Dinobots are usually really rough and tumble style Autobots. They are big and hulking, wide-shouldered, broad-chested, and he's looking a little anemic. I'm not going to lie. It's a, it's a little weird for a Dinobot, but there's reasoning for it. We will get to that, so. Looking in at the head, they have opted to go with the black head from the toy. This is Hasbro we're talking about, so they will always prefer to go toy accurate. So, that's not a big shock. So, you know, you red-headed slug fans, you're going to have to break out a paintbrush or something. It's not a bad look, though. Still works. Still looks like the G1 Triceratops. And speaking of, yeah, he is scrawny, but he still hits all the points that I really need him to hit. The colors are on point, everything seems to be balanced out correctly, and... Again, we're looking more toward toy accuracy here, so he seems to hit that well enough. He doesn't really reveal a lot of new detail, though. Uh, we got a little bit of silver going on in the ball joints and a little bit more paint here on the knees. His Autobot sigil in the front is now revealed, but that's really it, aside from just a lot of red plastic now being revealed. This is one thing about like sticking so close to the G1 Dinobot aesthetic. He carries over most of his colors and designs and molding from the robot, or from the beast mode, rather. And it is good molding. He's got a lot of tech detail around here, a lot of panels to make him look like he's very involved and very much a robot in disguise. Even though he's not really disguising, he's a big metal dinosaur. So, all that said, pretty simple figure as far as design goes. Now, let's go ahead and get into some of the other things he's capable of, for starters. We have this handgun thing that we have to talk about. So, yeah, he can hold it as a weapon, but because of these knuckle claws, I kind of like to have him underhand it. And this way he actually has some kind of big clawing weapon, which is a 
something to your imagination, but hey, it's the only practical way you can make a weapon out of the hand itself, because it's mostly supposed to be for armor. You'll note there's no real uh, blaster thing in the front you can imagine with. So to use as armor, we need to remove this, which gives him the tiny little handgun hidden inside the handgun. Clear plastic makes it look like it's just a flat sheet, so this could also be a data pad for all I know. It's, uh, I don't know. I still wish they had actually, you know, made it look like an actual gun. There's no need to make it look like a flat panel now, is there? So we'll go ahead and put him in the armor mode. Luckily, his is easy. It's just a flat hole right there on the chest. No panels, no wedging, little tabs in anywhere. And it sits uh, at least where you could conceivably imagine it being armor or some kind of flak jacket. Oh, and hey, I actually have a Prime Master now. So I can go ahead and plug him in and see what he looks like. thrilling. It's Vector Prime, by the way, so according to fiction, he now has the power to time travel, so he can go back to when his alt mode would actually disguise him from something. Yeah, it's still not impressive. It's just something for your imagination to do. It's very much plug the Minicon in and he's stronger now. Yeah, sure he is. Uh, at the very least, he at least gets his gun, so we'll go ahead and give him that, and we'll go into the articulation and rundown. His head does rotate left and right, and you do have to kind of press in to get it to actually articulate. Uh, yeah, luckily, it doesn't fight you too much. Ball joint, shoulder, works fine. Bicep swivel all the way around, 90 degree at the elbow, so all that works. Waist joint, nice and tight, actually. Thigh swivel, or thigh ball joint, works uh, fairly well. Doesn't get too wide on me for whatever reason. Kind of clashing there at the hip. Full rotation at the thigh. Eh, close to 90 degree knee. He's decently articulated, but, you know, it's a Dinobot. So I don't really expect him to be doing, like, ninja kick poses or anything. Just stand there, wield your gun, and look like a tough guy. Which is pretty much what you have to do. The scrawniness does take away from that, but it's what you do when you are now a combiner limb. You have to stick to a uniform width and a uniform height to make sure everything fits and works when you're a arm or leg. Speaking of, I will show you what he looks like as an arm really quickly. And he does a fairly serviceable job as an arm. Full range of motion, of course, because these toys are actually pretty good at that. I will say, because of the thin plastic and how the pegs are combined in, it's actually a little bit difficult to get this all connected together and solid as an arm. You kind of have to keep, uh, keep something plugged in and then squeeze it together so the plastic that's trying to peg together doesn't flex in and give way, which makes it really difficult to actually work in. But yeah, his limbs get out of the way. He's fairly solid. Looks like he will be a very nice arm for the Dinobot Combiner. And then we get to the final verdict. That has been Power of the Prime Slug. He's not bad. Like, as a Dinobot, like, as someone who's been waiting for new Dinobots since the originals came out, is not blowing me away, but he's still giving me everything I need out of an updated version of Slag. Apologies to the UK audience, I have to get the name in somewhere, don't I? He is decently articulated, he's decently detailed, nothing going extreme, but he does have some cool elements to him. The gap-filling heels and the inside-out paint job being very, very nice little tricks. Overall, uh, he's not bad. You know, nothing thrilling, but not bad. Wow, 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 wow.